Greetings again from our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, um, I'm going to talk about fornication again. Right? We're going to elaborate on fornication. Alright? So, let's go to the first instance where the word fornication appears in the Bible. Right? Because fornication is not stated in the Ten Commandments. Right? We find adultery in the Ten Commandments. Alright? So, let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 21 verse 11 all right second chronicles chapter 21 verse 11 moreover he made high places in the mountains of judah now these high places were dedicated to idols okay the gods of other nations right outside of israel right so it says um and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication. So see that serving idols is fornication, right? And it says, and compel Judah thereto. Is it? And when we compel others to serve idols, it's fornication as well, right? Because it's sin. Okay? So let's go to Isaiah 23 now. Isaiah chapter 23, verse 17. And it shall come to pass after the end of the 70 years. That the Lord will visit Tyre, right? And something normally special happens after seven days, you know, right through the Bible. You know, on the seventh day, something um, special happens, or on the eighth day, which is after the seventh, you know, is um, something special takes place, right? So it says, And it shall come to pass after the end of 70 years that the Lord will visit Ty Tyre, or Tyre, sorry, Tyre, <laughs> and and she shall turn to her higher and shall commit fornication right so see that Tyre was one of the nations that served God right that's why it says in Psalm chapter 87 behold Philistia and, and Tyre with Ethiopia this man was born there right so it's one of the places where Christ was born right so he says and and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the upon the face of the earth you see so who can <laughs> You understand? That's speaking about a whole nation, right? So if this was talking about sex before marriage, yeah, that would be everybody um, in Tyre would be doing sex before marriage, you know, with the rest of the world, <laughs> right? All right. So, you see that fornication is basically serving other gods, right? Let's go to um, First Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six, now. First Corinthians chapter six, verse thirteen. Right, it says, um, "Yeah, meats for the belly, and belly for the meats, and but God shall destroy both it and them." <laughs> right. So when them eat the meats sacrificed to idols, you know, um, God shall destroy them and that meat, you know, because it is dedicated to idols and not to and not to the Lord. Right. So it says, "Now the body." It, it says, but God shall destroy both it and them. <laughs> now the body is not for fornication, see? The body is not for fornication. It's not for serving idols, right? But it's to serve, it is for serving the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So it says, but for the Lord, <laughs> and the Lord for the body, see? So the body is not for idols, the body is for the Lord. You see? Okay? So, First Corinthians 7 now, verse 2 would say, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. You see that? So if you are so if you are not married, and even if you were married, and you have sex with another man's wife, which is married, that is fornication, right? Right. So it says never. So it's not that because um you have sex before you're married with um a woman that is married to someone else because that you're having someone else's wife, which is stealing, right? So. Read it again, he said, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Right? So let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 now. And now let's go to chapter 5 in, in 1 Corinthians, verse 1. He said, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not. 
as it's not so much named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. You see? So there are many kinds of fornication. And one is when you have your father's wife, right? According to the flesh. If you do this according to the flesh, right? It is you're serving the law of sin. <laughs> right? So but but if we have our father's wife, which is Christ, because Christ is the bride of, of, of God. So if we have our father's wife spiritually, then that is righteousness. Right? Because hear what the scripture say. First Corinthians chapter six, verse um verse eighteen it says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is with outside the body or without the body. The Bible says doeth is without the body, which is outside the body. <laughs> right? So whatsoever whatsoever we do in Christ is righteousness because we're doing things spiritually. Right? But if we do it in in, 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 in the enemy, then um you see, we have committed fornication. Right? And it says, But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. <laughs> see, because he was a part of the body. And now him serving idols that are outside the body. So him sin against the God, which is the body. You see? Because <laughs> he was joined to the Lord. Can you hear what the scripture said? Verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You see, so when you join unto the Lord, you are one with God. Okay, one spirit. Right? Not two, one. Right? So, let's go to First Thessalonians chapter 4, right? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. See? When we are sanctified, we abstain from fornication. But if we do fornication, we are defiled. Right? So now, let me go to um go to Ezekiel chapter I think it's twenty three chapter twenty three yeah let's go to Right. All right. Ezekiel chapter twenty three, verse seventeen. And the Babylonians came to her into a bed of love. <laughs> See that? Babylonians came to her into a bed of love. Right? They had, meaning they, had, they, had, they have had sex as well. You see, it says, and they defile her with their whoredom, right? Meaning the doctrine, right? The doctrine. It says, and he and she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them, right? I know who her, who, who her mind was alienated from. Oh, we'll go to, um, where is it? First thing is Corinthians. All right, Ephesians chapter four, verse eighteen, having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God. You see, so that's what they're alienated from, the life of God. When we commit fornication, means we have been alienated from the life of God. And to be alienated means you're, 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 you're separate, right? You're isolated, okay, from the people of God, or from God. So, let's go back to... I said, hold on, I never finish with that, I never finish with that, I never finish. Says, um,
Yeah. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. See, through the ignorance, right? Lack of, lack of knowledge of God. You see, it says because of the blindness of their heart. So the, the hearts are blinded because of lack of knowledge, right? So, what is Ezekiel now? Ezekiel chapter 16, verse, start from verse 24. Alright, so let's start from verse 23. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness. Woe, woe unto thee, saith the Lord God, that thou hast also put unto thee an, em an eminent place. Right? And hast made thee an high place in every street. See, and that's what see happening today. You know, but, um, the wicked have put a high place in every street. You know, because Jamaica the most church, um, churches per square mile. You understand? So, what you know, it's a, um, thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way, <laughs> and, and has made thy beauty to be hated, right? And has opened thy feet to everyone that passed by, and multiplied thy whoredoms, right? Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, greater flesh. So notice it says greater flesh. <laughs> Cause why? <laughs> the flesh profit nothing, right? As we read um Saint John chapter six verse sixty three, the flesh profit nothing, the word that I speak unto their spirit and, and, and their life. Right? And when you read Proverbs Proverbs, hold on, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter ten verse two. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivered from death. Right? So treasures of the wicked is the flesh right can flesh profit nothing so it's a great of flesh you know great of lies <laughs> you understand great of wickedness treasures of wickedness which is lies right so i just know um yeah yes yeah, so i said neither shall pharaoh with his mighty army and great company make for him in the war <laughs> by casting up mounts and building for hold on wrong place oh. sorry i was reading from the wrong chapter i'll go Go back to the right. Yeah, all right. Verse 26. Yeah. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, greater flesh, and hast increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Behold, therefore I have stretched out my hand over thee, and have diminished thine ordinary food, and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee, the daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy, of thy lewd way. Yes, we are ashamed of your lewd way. You understand? And the poor has now come with the come with the come with the, the famine. You understand? This is talking about the poor. You see, can hear Jeremiah 14 say so now? Hear Jeremiah 14. Speaking of the poor, right? Jeremiah chapter 14. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 18. If I if I go forth into the field, then behold the slain with the sword. And if I enter into the city, and behold them that are sick with famine. Right? So the sick. <laughs> if the sick have take out take away their, 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 their bread. Right? The sick. It says, um, sick with famine, yea, both the prophet and the priest go about into the land that they know not. You see. So, um let's go back to Ezekiel now. Ezekiel chapter 16 right verse 27 he said behold therefore I have stretched out my hand over thee right and have diminished thine ordinary food and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee the daughters of the Philistines and which are which are ashamed of thy lewd way right so yes we are ashamed of your lewd way and let's go to know um yeah Go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 19. Right. Isaiah chapter 19, verse 16. In that day shall Egypt be like unto woman, 
and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts which he shake it over it see the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts and what we read in um, Ezekiel chapter 16 here it says um, behold therefore I have stretched out my hand over thee and diminish thy ordinary food hold on yeah hold on go back to Jeremiah yeah go back to Jeremiah right Jeremiah chapter 14 verse Yeah, it said, Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 27. Behold, therefore, I have stretched out my hand over thee. See, so notice it says, he has stretched out his hand over thee. All right, let's go to Isaiah 19 now. Isaiah 19. Behold, I have stretched my hand over thee. Okay. Go back to Isaiah 19 now. Isaiah chapter 19, verse 16. In that day shall Egypt be like unto women. And he shall be afraid because, afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shake it over it. Right? So the Lord is shaking his hand over Egypt now. Right? So, go to Jude chapter 1, verse 7. Jude chapter 1, verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. So don't use the word flesh again. So you've got flesh perfect, nothing. Right? Mean lies. Right? It says, I set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. <laughs> yeah, that these be the days of vengeance. Right? So alright. Let's go to Revelation chapter 18 now. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18 says Revelation 18 verse 7 How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously So much torment and sorrow give her Yeah And the increase in knowledge is the increase in sorrow You understand? According to Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 18 Right He said So much torment and sorrow give her For she saith in her heart I sit a queen And I am and no widow And shall see no sorrow Therefore shall her plague come in one day. In, therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Can I remember I read Jeremiah 14 verse 18. It says, If I go out into the field, behold the slain with sword. If I go, go to the streets, behold the sick with famine. Right? So what you know. I'm saying. So those are the plagues. The famine and the, and the pestilence and the sword. You understand? Plagues. Right? So it says, and, and therefore shall her plagues come in one day. <laughs> See in one day, because scripture say, and in that day, right, he shall call me Ishi and shall call me no more barely. Right? And he says, and in and in that day, which is Isaiah twelve, chapter twelve, it says, In that day thou shalt thou, thou, thou shalt say, I will praise thee, you know, O Lord. So let's go to um we'll go back, it say. And I've committed hold on. Yeah. Therefore shall the plagues come in one day. <laughs> right he said come in one day I've got to I think it's Jeremiah 51 Jeremiah chapter 51 no no not Jeremiah 51 I remember now, I remember now, I remember now, I remember now, I remember now. Yeah, 
Yes, Nahum chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, Elkoshite. God is jealous. And the Lord revenge it. Hear that? The Lord revenge it. Well, God is jealous. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserve it wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. See, the Lord not going to pardon the wicked, right? But he's slow to anger, right? So he'll give you time to repent, you know? The Lord hath, the Lord hath his way in, in the whirlwind, and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Yes, the clouds are the dust of his feet, right? Which is the word, right? Hear what he says now. He was saying in Isaiah. Clothes are the dust of his feet, right? Go to Isaiah 65. Okay. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and and thus shall be the serpent's meat. Right? See so that thus shall be the serpent's meat. Right? And 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 serp and the serpent's meat is the word of God. Right? Serpent's meat is the word of God. You see, you say. So so the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lamb, lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and thus shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. You see, so the lamb and the lamb and the lion and the wolf and the serpent and the bullock, they are live in the holy mountain in peace. You understand the wolf? Yeah, even the wolf as a place. Because all those represent the children of Israel, right? Right? Let me show you. Like, we got to Genesis. Genesis. Alright, Genesis. Genesis chapter 49 verse 27 It says Benjamin shall ravin as a wolf <laughs> See So the wolf as a place in the holy mount Because the wolf is also a symbol for the children of Israel Right the wolf right? So it says Benjamin shall ravin as a wolf In the morning he shall devour the prey And at night he shall divide the spoil You see that He shall devour the prey even as, even as the lion Even as how the lion devour the prey Or even the serpent devour the prey Right So so see that um dust is the serpent's meat, right? Let's go to um Genesis chapter um Genesis chapter two, right? Genesis chapter two verse eight. It says sorry, verse seven. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. You see? The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. See, which is the word of God. See, because God has to be created in you, which is the inner man, right? The inner man of God then, right? So, he says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. See, I remember the scripture said, The clouds are the dust of his feet. <laughs> right? I remember he teach it with his feet. <laughs> right? I remember um, um, he scattered the hoarfrost like ashes. You see, the hoarfrost and hoarfrost is manna. So you see, so the serpent feed on manna. You understand which is the dust, right? I said, dust shall be the serpent's meat, and he formed man of the dust of the ground, right? After the baptism took, I said, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. See, it was a wilderness, and now become a fruitful field through baptism. You understand? So watch it now. Let's go to Psalm 102 now. Psalm 102. Psalm 102, verse, verse 13, it says, verse 13 and 14, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. See, the Lord have arose and have mercy upon me. Right? Because he dwell in Zion. Right? So it says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her. 
right? And I'm having mercy upon Zion right now. See, the Lord have had mercy upon me, so I'm showing mercy. Right? So he said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time for her, yea, the set time is come. Yes, the time is now, you see? The end is come, the end is now. Right? So it says, For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. You see, we favor the dust. Meaning, we, 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 we love the dust. We are fond of the dust, you understand? We embrace the dust. Right? Because dust is the word of God. Lord God, for a man of the dust of the ground and breathing to not with the breath of life. So the word is dust and breath. You see, the breath of life and the dust. And this is creating the inner man, which has bones and sinews, right, and flesh as well, but is on the inside, it's spiritual. You see, the spiritual man, not the outer. So you have the outer dust and inner dust. The inner dust, right? So what you know, and basically, Zion is in you, right? And Zion has trees, streets. So all these things must be created in you to your imagination when you study the scriptures, right? You have retained the city, because the city is created in you, right? To, to your imagination when you study, right? So, watch this now. So, a dust is the serpent's meat, right? Let's go to Lamentations now. Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 29 he put at his mouth in the dust hear that hear Christ do put him out in the dust right he said let's start from verse 28 or even verse 27 it says it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth <laughs> it's good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth right and then it says um, um, he sitteth alone and keepeth silence see he's in the wilderness he sits alone, he's alienated from the life of Satan. You see? So what should I say? He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. Yeah. You know, even when I got emancipation park, I'm alone. You know, and I call to people to come to me. You see. So he said, um, he sitteth alone, he keeps silent because he hath borne it upon him. Right? I have borne it upon him. But I have borne the word of God. Right? That's my burden. So he said. If you read Malachi chapter 1 verse 1, right? So, let's go to, he said, Because he had borne it upon him, he put at his mouth in the dust. <laughs> you see that? He put his mouth in the, in the dust, which is the word. You understand? I hear it now. He put at his mouth in the dust. If so, there, if so be, there may be hope. See? If so, there may be hope. Come with a better hope. That's so why I put him out in the dust. See, the word. That Christ is the hope of glory. Alright, let's go to, um let's go to I think it's Colossians Colossians chapter one verse twenty six and twenty seven. If that verse twenty five Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you. See that? The dispensation given to me for you. Right, that's so why I'm telling about the dragons and the serpents and the dust, you know, the dust. You never hear this before. Right, because this dispensation given unto me, which I give willingly. You see, so what you know, it's a of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. You see that? To fulfill the word of God. Right, so it says, um, see, hold on, let me show you. Isaiah, go to Isaiah quickly. Isaiah quickly. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 18 and it shall come to pass in that day see that in that day <laughs> right it shall come to pass in that day where it says even when we about read Revelation 18 well on Revelation it's in Revelation Revelation chapter 18 verse 8 it said therefore shall your plagues come in one day right here it is now and in that day shall it come to pass, and, in it, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the, of the rivers of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. You see? And these are our people that I'm calling for. You see? The bee and the fly. You understand? Right? Execute judgment. Right? So watch it now. We'll go back to... Um, 
where I was now. Yeah. Go back to home. Where was I? Where was I? Oh yeah, put that his mouth in the dust. Hold on. Ah, yeah, ah, yeah, yeah, Exodus chapter 8, Exodus chapter 8, Exodus chapter 8, so no, right, yeah, verse 9, it says, start from verse, it's Exodus chapter 8, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. Right, so this is the sprinkling. Right, so this is the sprinkling of the ashes, right, which is the which is the whole frost, which is the manna. This is the sprinkling of it, right? I've got to Psalm back again, Psalm 100 and Psalm 100 and I think Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Yeah, Psalm 102, verse 9. For I have eaten ashes like bread. Why do you think he said I have eaten ashes like bread? Right, I remember scripture says he scattered the whole frost like ashes. <laughs> right? Read that it says, um, For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping. Right? So he scattered ashes like bread. Right? So watch it now. Go back to your side. So verse Exodus chapter 8, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take you handfuls of ashes. Of the furnace, see eh? the bread that is baked in the furnace, right? And let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. See, so sprinkling the bread, right, which is baked in the oven, right? The sight of Pharaoh. So it said, and it shall come, and it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt. See, that's what it's bread, is small dust, which is the whole frost, which is manna, right? Got the serpent, dust shall be the serpent's meat, right? So I just know it said, um, and it shall come small dust in the land of Egypt. And shall be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast through all the land of Egypt. And they took the ashes of the furnace and, and stood before Pharaoh and Moses, sprinkled it upward toward heaven. And it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast. You see, let's go to Revelation chapter 16, verse 2. See, so sprinkle the dust. <laughs> see, it. watch it. We go to um, Revelation chapter sixteen, verse two. And the first, and the first went, which is the first angel, right? He said, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a nice amount of grievous sore upon the men which had received the mark of the beast, and which worship, and which worship, and which worship. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a nice um, and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worship his image. See? So when they start calling for the fly, he shall hiss for the fly. <laughs> right? He read it, what, what call for the, what, what, what call for the angels. Right? Let me show you. Yeah. Exodus chapter 10. Verse 14, and locusts went up all over the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous. See, very grievous. <laughs> a correction is grievous and him that are forsaken away, right? Very, right, so he said, very grievous were they before them. There were no such locusts as they, as they, neither after them shall be such. <laughs> See that? These locusts are kings. Right? These locusts. Okay? So watch this now. Let's go to... All right. Um, yeah, Jeremiah. 